everyone, my name is Martin from Isopod Corner. Thanks for joining me on the video today. The topic today is making our own Isopod food. It's pretty simple. If you buy in bulk, you'll save a lot of money. Uh, and doing it yourself is very rewarding, just like baking a pie. So what I do uh, is mix nine different ingredients into this powdered mix. Uh, it gets uh, basically mixed up and ground it through a coffee grinder so it's nice and and consistent i sell these on the website if, if you're if you know you don't want to make bulk i also i have to make in bulk because i have so many isopods um and uh if i bought store-bought stuff it'd be quite expensive to feed my crew so uh after a lot of research looking at different types of ingredients um what do ice pots prefer? What do they need? The fats, the minerals, the protein, the, uh, uh, all the nutrients that they need uh, for a sort of a somewhat complete diet um, went into my sort of my last batch that really worked well. It seemed like all my isopods really enjoy this. Um, the colonies grow, they're super healthy. I've never had a crash. Um, I'm not saying it's because of the food, but the food certainly helps with uh, with their health, of course. Uh, along with this food, uh, I'll, I'll supplement with some veggies, um, either some sweet potatoes, chopped up cucumber, and zucchini. Those are usually my go-to. Some people like to also feed their isopods um, I think it's Chinese cabbage. Oh, oh carrots are really good as well. Um, uh, is that they typically will just dry up and not mold and, and mold, keeping mold out of the enclosure is super important as you know. Um, so like I said, I, I probably put in one teaspoon uh, in each bin depending on how many isopods are within that bin and we'll give them one piece of uh, vegetable for that day and check on it in a day or two if it's all gone I, I restock the, the idea behind feeding them at least the dried powdered food is you want to give them enough so that it's it's all gone within a couple of days two days it's all gone and then you can restock um, for some reason for like I had the bug burgers and the uh, morning wood I've tried those, they worked, um, but not for all my species, surprisingly enough. Uh, I've, all, I've tried it in the powdered format or in the congealed format and uh, got mixed results. A lot of times I was taking out stuff that was there for two, three, four days. If the isopods are not eating it, then why, why bother continue trying to feed them that? Um, so I, like I said, I, I did some searching and found a set of ingredients that when combined together gives them everything they need, the source of protein, the high fiber, the fats, the calciums, all the, all the different minerals and vitamins. It's all included in these nine ingredients that I have. It's super high, oh, it's super high in protein, which is great because it's going to help your animals grow. Let's get into all the ingredients and start mixing. Okay, so we have our cornmeal, we have some bean flour, we have some rice bran, we have some flaxseed powder, and we have some black soldier fly larvae, one of the best larvae or nutritional larvae out there for sure hands down super high in, in calcium super high in protein it's really good for animals uh, then I add some uh, fish flakes to it some dried potato flakes some baker's yeast and some calcium carbonate and some bee pollen so I think I think that's actually 10 ingredients in total. Yes, that's 10 ingredients. And um, yeah, so I'll start mixing. The recipe is fairly simple. It's two of pretty much everything. 
two cups of cornmeal, two cups of bean flour, two cups of rice bran, two cups of flaxseed powder, two cups of black soldier fly, two cups of uh, fish flakes, two cups of potato flakes, and then only one cup of yeast, two tablespoons of calcium carbonate, and then two tablespoons of bee pollen. Once that's all in the bowl, it's all mixed by hand, and then we process it all within uh, the coffee grinder so that it's a consistent texture all the way through. Uh, once that's done, then it's simply just packaging and dropping the right amounts. There's a four ounce pack and a 16 ounce pack. You probably won't need to do that. Uh, if you decide to make this at home for yourself, you could just put it in a baggie, put it in the fridge once you're done, and it'll keep for quite some time. So let's get mixing. Okay, so now we got our measuring cup. This is a two cup measuring cup. So pretty simple. First, I'll get into the rice bran. here so I'll clean that up. Move the scale. And now we just need to blend that and mix that here. Consistency, it's almost like a brown sugar consistency without any stickiness. It's completely dry. Alright, so I'm gonna speed through the process. You don't need to watch me do the whole batch, and then we'll get into our packaging.
we have it all made, it's all grounded. Now it's just ready to be packaged. Okay, so we'll make a 16 ounce bag. Yum, isopod food. 16 ounces is exactly 454 grams. And since I've done this a few times, I know approximately how much to put in, and then I'll weigh it and adjust accordingly. <laughs> and I always add a little bit more. The, uh, the container, the pouch weighs a little bit. There we go. Perfect. That's all done. We slap a tag on it. This tag printed out a little weird. The instructions or the ingredients at the bottom continue at the top. Okay, it doesn't affect the food, right? Add the directions to the back. Directions are pretty simple. You want to feed it, you want to feed your isopods, again, enough for it to last two days. And if there's any left, we should take it out after two days. And um, if there's, or if you look and, and it's all gone after one day, add some more on the second day. Uh, giving them a, a, a fresh supply or a constant supply of this food is going to keep your health, your isopods happy, healthy, and making babies, which is pretty much what we want. And we enjoy seeing little mankai walk around.